country, military, financially, uh, when the enemy want to come, he's going to find a way. And the scripture is being fulfilled. Uh, the scripture is being fulfilled as we wake up and move and have our being, the scriptures is fulfilling. There are nations through Russia, and, they, and he put together, he called the BRICS. And what it's designed to do is take most of the currency and power from the United States and our allies and use everything over in the Middle East and start controlling everything. And so if they can't do it military, they aim is to do it financially. And that's one of the doors that family gonna hit America. If you notice that when Ukraine got invaded, things shifted. Most of our wheat that make of flour and different things, it went up and it was a shortage. A lot of our independent is across the Middle East. And they've been trying to push every president to get uh, self-efficient in America. But for some reason, you know, it plays out that they really don't do it. You know, our president now is shutting down the gas and, and, and we can have our own gas line, shut it down from Alaska. It just, you know, so then you go over there and shake hands with the enemy, talking about some oil, you did something good, but they done joined the pranks. So when you look at the scripture, the scripture is, is, is walking this world down. The Bible is walking this world down. And if it's ever time to really uh, get in God and make sure your soul is anchored in God and, and, and it's now, uh, you know, when, when things happen, tragedy happen, you, 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 you don't want to wait and, and start scratching for straws and get in the panic. Oh, God, what am I going to do? You say you'll never leave me. We should have been prepared already. Because if he said the judge shall live by faith, that means we already in the vein. Right? We already in the vein. And, um, uh, and as we go into the book of Luke, uh, chapter 9, uh, did I say Luke chapter 9? Yes, sir. Um, We're going to see, and I, I want to break this down uh, a little bit. I want to break this down a little bit because um, I want to encourage, and I'm going to encourage the body. I'm going to encourage this ministry, you know. Um, Anytime I know a storm going to come and I see the storm coming uh, 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 and, and they say, well, it may turn and, and it may come up this way. Um, I don't wait to the last minute until it turns. And then you meet 100, 300 people in one store. That's not wise. Not you. If, if if you 
you work a lot and, 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 and you know you ain't got nobody to do it for you or whatever you hey you understand that but but we got to get wiser now we, we got to get wiser now we don't wait till the storm is at the door and then we try to go get prepared for it right uh when i see it's turning i pray and i go and go he said okay no go get prepared i go get prepared i i go get seven jugs of gas I go get seven jugs of gas. Got a generator. I'm gonna work it. Get extra oil for the generator. I'm gonna work it. And the pastor said, "Why you got all that gas? I smell it in the house." I said, "Well, I'm so glad I didn't have to use the gas for the purpose that I got the gas for, because it turned it when it's bad." But if it would have been on the path, what they said would have been okay. Amen. So, this is how salvation is. I'd rather be prepared than take the chance and don't know when I'm going to get prepared or be ready. And so, our faith has to continue to be striving and thriving uh, in the Word of God and, 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 and in the book of Luke, chapter 9, says, uh, verse, verse 39, And lo, a spirit taken him, and he suddenly cried out, and it teared him, that he foamed again, and brushes him heartily, departed from him. And I besought the disciples, he cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered, said, Oh, faithless. He never said they didn't have faith. He said, faithless. And that point right there that Jesus was, was making, when he said, faithless, you're going to let this challenge cause your faith to go down. You're going to let what you see cause your faith to go down. You're going to let how you feel at that time cause your faith to go down. And that's how a lot of times, you know, um, you know, uh, believers, you know, you know, be so charged up. And then when, when it's a great challenge, they go to panicking. And the panic come from... Um, not plugged in like they say they are. You know, and we are in a time if we say we plugged in, we got to be plugged in. That way when the challenge come, I'm not going to panic because you can make a shipwreck through panicking, and the enemy could get in there even more through panicking. I'm going to shut my head off. If I was in God when it came, I'm not going to let it pull me out of God when I need God. Y'all see that? And what happens is, these guys, these disciples, seeing a spirit like this, Moving and you know foaming and all of that, you know that 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 that, that shook them. That shook them just like if a demon manifests itself around you. You 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 you. you it's some preachers know the word. It's some preachers, but they gonna get them around that demon. You know, it's some prophet. Is there prophets all day long? But a demon manifests, they gonna boogie boogie. A lot of them will get up out of no. That it ain't for me. You, you, you got what I'm saying? And so, so if, 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 and, and that's not, that's not, even if a person that carries a title in the fivefold, supposed to be graced and have the gift of the fivefold, even if they don't have enough authority or maturity to cast it out, they still shouldn't have no fear. 
because even if they can't cast it out, they should have enough faith in in in, 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 in anointing that that spirit comes subject. You got it. And so what I'm saying is, is that our faith got to continue to grow where whatever come our way, that spirit got to come subject. Because if a spirit don't come subject, it's designed to overtake you. It's designed to dismantle something. It interrupts something. Uh, 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 to strike you from your next breakthrough. It, 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 it have a purpose. It have a purpose. And so the scripture says, for the one, and Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless. So he never said that they did not have no faith. They did not have no faith. No, he said faithless. Because you gonna let this right here out of everything you done saw me do, gonna let it run you. You gonna let this here control all of y'all. It wasn't but one Jesus, but how many disciples that was there? They should have had enough in all of them to be able to at least hold it down. Do something. <laughs> y'all see that? And so Jesus said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. Right? Bring that son thou hither. Okay? And he and, and as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tore him, and Jesus rebuked unclean spirits and healed and child and delivered him again and the father you know and, and, and all of that you know and, and so now th this is one of the things you know uh, you know when the question was raised you know why we couldn't do it because you know now let me help you you gotta pray you gotta pray you gotta fast we gotta pray we gotta fast and oftentimes, you know, and, and I really believe that because Jesus wouldn't have never said this. He wouldn't have never said this. When they was walking with Jesus, and Jesus was demonstrating, and, and, and you know, somebody wasn't praying like they should have been praying. Well, the the was teach us how to pray. Okay, once you know how to pray, you're going to keep it up. You see, somebody may not, somebody wasn't fasting like they should have been fasting. You see? So, but Jesus still was given the right artillery to face whatever trial you're going to go through is going to come through fasting and praying. Amen. So, that is a very good sign that Something was out of pocket. Something was missing for Jesus to say that. Because if they was doing it, Jesus wouldn't have had to say that. And so many times you can be dependent on somebody else's relationship with Christ and leave your relationship stagnated. And so Jesus was teaching them, listen, I'm finna leave. You better catch this here. You gotta fast, you gotta pray, you 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 you, you, you gotta do this here. You gotta do this here. That's how you're gonna conquer demonic activity, that's how you're gonna conquer situations that rise up in your personal life. Uh, uh you got to arm yourself like why. So and, and, and I wanna say this here, I wanna say this, and, and I learned this here. When I was working a lot and I was working a lot and working a lot, the Holy Spirit said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't take no lunch tomorrow. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, don't take no lunch tomorrow and don't drink until I tell you to drink. I said, what are you saying, God? He said, in order for you to keep up to where I'm trying to raise you up to, 
you got to implement fasting and praying in your daily job too. You got to implement it because we can get so busy. We say, God, I ain't got enough time to fast and pray. I, I, you know, like you got to be sitting still and quiet. No, that's not true. You, you got to learn how to pray within yourself. You got to learn how to, amen. Matter of fact, when you're fasting, everybody don't need to know you're fasting unless we go on a corporate fast. So, it, hey, it, it, it works by itself. So, it's self-efficient. Are you, you getting it? So even if you go on a lot, even if you're doing a lot, you can always implement fasting. You could you you could you you can do a consecration. You 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 can do a consecration. You 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 it's a way that you can always stay in tune to a, that place and you stay in that vein of God. Amen. Because so many people, amen, get out of the pocket of God because they put their time in and they say, well, I don't have this time to do this. I don't have this time to do this. And so when the book of man shows up, then it shows that faithless because of the action. The actions. The actions. The, 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 the emotions and, and, and what be said out of the mouth it shows and so really when you look at this content of this scripture they, 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 they the, the father automatically thought because they was with Jesus they was able to do what he asked them you know, it's something to be in the body of Christ but can't produce like the body of Christ is supposed to produce. Are y'all following me? Yes. And so it's not a problem with the body of Christ. It's a problem, it's a problem with uh, the maturity and the growth and the hunger and thirst after righteousness through a personal relationship. You see, so anytime something happens or, or the wisdom comes, it ought to be conveyed or uh, 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 expound on like the scripture says. With faith, with trust, with love, with maturity, with, with, with strength, with power, with the anointing. It, it, ought to, it ought to be able to come together and, and be that strength. That's why the Bible declares, amen, that, that when he gave the fivefold is to the edifies of the saint until Christ come again. And so the question is, how much we have in us to edify somebody, but when we need something on the inside to fight our giant, do we have enough? Let me go this way. In the body of Christ, we release our faith for everybody else we got pictures on everybody else, but when that book of man hit your address, how much faith do you got to challenge that devil? Teach it. Because watch this here. It's one thing to be outside the bubble and fight and, and fight with somebody, but it's another when you get hit. Oh my God. Right. It's another when y'all hear what I'm saying? I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel everybody say that's a shifting right here. I already done prayed that the faith in this ministry gonna shoot up. I cut up myself. It's one thing about when you got a trainer telling that, telling Mike Tyson, hey man, you got to drop that hip, you got to drop that there. And Mike Tyson come and say, hey, yeah, but you ain't felt that hit I just hit. I got hit when you ain't felt that. <laughs> you, you, you understand? So it's something about when we can motivate, when we can encourage everybody else, but when it's your time and the enemy come in like a flood, who you trusting in to raise up a standard against thee? And so now, that's when you have moves, Wayne. That's how you get them low lows. That's how you get it. Because all that started to work in it. Well, maybe he going to come. Maybe he not. The, oh, God. Lord Jesus. Let me get back here. I'm getting excited. Let me get excited. Let me get excited. Let me get excited. Let me get excited. And so. There's always going to be an opportunity for faithless to pop up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 
when it comes, we got to, when faithless pop up, other words, try to get you in emotion, get you out of character, get you out of the trust system, what you've been doing, amen, as you're seeking God, getting in the word of God, fasting and have a life of consecration and dedication. What will happen is when faithless come up and try to bring an opportunity to bring doubt, amen, you'll chop that L-E-S-S -S and you'll put O-F dash faith. I'm going to faith to faith, right? Started from faithless to doubt. I'm going to faith to faith. So when you come at me, I'm already built up. I'm already charged. I already been confessed. Matter of fact, I know you're coming. That's why I'm confessing. I knew you were coming. That's why I'm in the word. I already knew you're coming. That's why I got the whole of my God on. I knew you were coming. That's why Romans 12 said, I was in this by the living sacrifice. Hold on, that's acceptable. Uh oh, God, I knew you were coming. God, yes, so, God. so we cannot be like the five wise and the five foolish with our faith. And so I think I have to really just, 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 you know, can I tell you something? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a nugget here. It works. When you get, when opposition come, whatever your opposition or whatever the challenge, whatever your trial is, Right? As a believer, as a man of God, woman of God of the faith, you cannot expound on that too much. You got to literally, it may be a fight that you're going through something, something popped up, you're back against the wall, but the truth said, Jehovah Jireh is still living. The truth said, I, I, he's still a healer. The truth said, he's still my redeemer. The truth said, he's still one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The truth said, he's never left me, nor he will forsake me. I once was young, now I'm old, I've never seen the right thing. Beg you know, is he begging with prayer? I, 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 you can't let the fights override truth. So sometimes you got to drop the fight and get truth built back up. And when you pick back up the fight, I'm not seeing it what it is. I'm seeing it what truth said. Oh, God, I feel a faith moving. Oh, you got to drop it sometimes. Take a break. Take a break. Hear God. God, what you want me to do? I, 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 I know it's there, but let me, let me drop it. Let me own it. Everybody say, oh, listen. You got to you got you got to drop it on purpose. Cause if you don't, pills will stress you out. People will stress you out. Satan will stress you out. Listen, listen. God. Then he said he wants to put all Paul said, I wish to all that we prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prosper. He said, I wish. Other word, if the answer wasn't there, if the oh God, he would wish something that the answer wouldn't be there. He would wish something that the weight maker won't show up. He would wish something that it wasn't gonna be no power. Oh my God. Watch this here. So sometimes you got you got to just drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. You got to drop it. You, you got to drop it. When you drop it, you see, you let God take you back to it. Because if God don't take you back, you're going to handle it the same way. You're going to handle that, that issue, that problem, that book of man, whatever it is, that trial, trouble, you're going to handle it the same way. You're going to handle it the same way. But what we have to do, we got to get a break. And see, what's this idea, Lord? Uh, 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 and see, you know, uh, it is in the labor law. If you work, amen, past four hours or five hours, you must take a break. Why? Because if you don't take a break, it may affect your body. And that's the same thing with your trials and tribulations. Take a break. It will affect your spiritual process if you don't take a break take a break god already know where you at if he already i'm, I'm gonna raise somebody trust the system in here uh, he already know 
He already know. But he's looking for that right corresponding night you now. We got to get heaven down here on earth. And how we get heaven down here on earth, I'm starting to think like heaven. I'm starting to think like my daddy. I'm starting to think. My mind is renewed. Oh, God, no, 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 I'm preaching out of the spirit, y'all. I'm going to go from my side. We got to get heaven here on earth. Then he say, whatever you lose on by, and whatever you lose on earth, why you still got it if you don't lose him? If you don't lose heaven on earth on your situation, why you still carry it? That means you got to take a break. And so when heaven hit down here, now you can go back to and say, hey, I got reinforcement. I got some help now. I know you thought you were going to swallow me up. I know you thought you were going to kick me up out of my house. I know you thought I was going to pay my bill. I know you thought I was going to say, say, oh, but when I looked around again, I found help. I found that he was a help in a time of trouble. I found that he is my way maker. I found that he is my refuge. And as a believer, we want to be strong. But you can't be strong if you don't know how to fight in your weakness. You can't be strong until you learn how to fight in your weak time. When you fight in your weak is time, your weakest time, that's when God stand up. That's why David said, if I make my bed in hell, he's there. So in other words, if whatever it is, I know I'm going to let my weak discover what's in me. And that's why our faith got to continue to rise. Because when you face that trial, it's going to find out, it's going to find you out how much you've been getting when you've been coming every Sunday, every week, and what you do all through the week. It's going to find it out. Because why? Your words got to be tried. Bye bye. I don't know what I'm going to do. When you have done all you know, you stand still and let salvation stand up. You let salvation, let the cross work for you. Let the, let the, let the, let the, oh God, you, you, you let the manifestation of Jesus' death and suffering work for you. Let the word of God prove itself because the word can't prove itself unless you get into something. Right. You must be into something for the word have something to prove. Uh, are are y'all getting this here? So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, everything ain't going to be peaches and ice cream, but you got to know, don't let that devil turn your faith to faith to faithless. Because faithless can be just as deadly as doubt. Because you can miss your season, you can miss the opportunity, and walk around that situation for eight more days, for three more months, for one more year, but God said, I'm raising up a nation where I open up my mouth. They faith gonna catch it. They character gonna catch it. They mind and spirit gonna catch it. And the Holy Ghost gonna lock them in there. Wherever my steps need to be ordered, I'm ready to go there. I don't care what it look like. I'm ready to possess it. I'll cut my shot. I'm talking to some possessors tonight that's trying to go to where God wants them to go. And don't let that devil get you in faithless because if God knows that you in there, he Escape for you to get out of there. Amen. If he know you in there, he got a way of escape to get you out of there. Yes. God's beautiful. But we put too much of our in them. Take a break. Take a break. Take a break. Try. You'll come back and say, My God. My God. I've been watching TV and they ain't told me this. I've been watching the Word Network and they ain't told me this. <laughs> they ain't told you this. Oh God, they ain't told you this. Hey man, they, they ain't told me this. But I'm going to show you what works in the revelation of this Word. It works. It works. And I, if somebody needs a miracle, you you know to do good and don't do good, 
You, you, know, you really don't want a miracle. You want to use God. Right, 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 right. You don't want a miracle. You want to use God. Come on, come on. You don't want a miracle. You want to use God. Jesus. You, 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 you want to use God. You don't want a miracle. You want to use God. <laughs> See, because... Let me, I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to show you something. Between, uh, you know, uh, a saint, a believer, versus someone don't have it all right. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Right? Okay. Chapter 7, real quick. Real quick, I'm trying not to get this out here. I want to scare y'all on a Wednesday night. <laughs> oh God, you come my secret in the bush. You come on my side. You come on see. See, we talking about experience. This is experience. All right, Luke chapter seven. Uh, seven, first verse. Now, we know faith come by hearing. Hearing by what? Okay. Now, when he had ended all his saying in the audience of the people, he entered in Samaritan. Capernaum. Capernaum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got close. <laughs> and a certain satyrian servant who was Dear unto him was sick and ready to die. Right? And when he heard of Jesus, he heard. He heard. He didn't hang around him. He went in that. He went in that. He went in that that, 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 that 12. He went in that, that hundred. He went in. He went, he, he went nowhere around Jesus. He wasn't even church alive. He wasn't even church alive. He wasn't even church alive. He went, he had no spill of no dirt. Let me show you something. Third verse. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him, and 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 he he heard, right? He heard of Jesus, and he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, right? Okay, now did the did the did the woman that had the issue of blood, did, did she know Jesus? She, she didn't know Jesus. She didn't. She didn't walk with Jesus. She, but but she heard. She don't know if it was accurate or not. But hey, when you're back against the wall, I heard it's, it's the rumors going out. The lame walking, the dead raising, the 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 the, 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 the lepers being healed, and all of it. I, I, hey, uh, uh, somebody got to be telling the truth. So by that, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and then, and when he was now, now not far. He was not far from the house. The satyrians sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. Lord, trouble not thyself. Don't, don't worry about it. For I am worth, I'm not worthy. Trouble not thou, trouble not thyself. For I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Other words, what he's saying, I got so much sin going on. I'm so, I'm so out of the pocket. I'm so, I, you, you can't look up. You, no. <laughs> no, I got enough respect for you. I, I, I just can't do it. But, but what I do need, I need a, I need a miracle. What I do need, I need a miracle. Now, it's, it's a difference between this person 
not what in the vein of God, but have enough respect for the things of God and say, listen, you 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 you, you can't come up under my roof, but uh, you know, I got something else. But what about individuals that have experienced God in their life time after time? Get a word time after time. Y'all follow me? And so now you need a miracle and you just in the same situation. You get put in the same situation as this guy. God should be worthy to walk in your house. He should be able to walk throughout your life. So as a believer, never want a miracle, but don't want him. You never want to, you, you, you never, you never want a miracle, and we don't want to seek after him. Because if God don't got all of us, I ain't talking about he do, he ain't do with me yet. He he still working on me. He still working on me. He he, he. well, okay, your mind made up for him to work on you. You, you, you got what I'm saying? And see, that's what happens in the body of Christ. We'll pursue a miracle, but don't pursue holiness of him. See, this guy here, he, he went front. No, you can't go up under my roof. I ain't even worth it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But what about when you know God be good to you? When you know God made a way out of no way, we should never be put in this category. I need you, God, but you can't come where I'm at. My God. That's faithless as a believer. That's not that's not totally. Faith that's been built on the word of God. That's the spirit that wants something from God, but don't want to surrender all to God. Are y'all getting this here? We should, as a believer, out of all God done did and done for us, we should never be put as a sinner needing God. Oh, I just brought you all the way back around and show you that. You should never have your mind and your spirit act a sinner. When you need God, you're going to beg God. You're going to do this right here. No. If you're a believer, you in the will of God. Hey, it's yours. Amen. How dare you put me in that box? How dare you put me in that category? No, God, walk throughout my bedroom. Walk throughout my house. Walk wherever you want. Walk in the business. Walk on my job. You won't see clean hands. Don't worry about it. Come on, all I need for you to do is do what you always do. Show up for me, Father. Thank you, God. Do God, my son. Think about it. You won't have to think long. Look around, you won't have to look wrong. You won't have to look long. How people want to treat God as a savior, but they are sinner and they and they act like an unbeliever until they get they back against the wall and there you go. I'm talking to the saints tonight now. Okay? I'm talking to believers tonight. I'm showing you the difference. I'm showing you the difference. Now watch this here. Watch what he said. And now this is a shame. This, this is a shame. Everybody say this is a shame. I'm gonna show you this right here. This is a shame. This is a this is a shame. This is a shame. Jesus. Oh. Uh, this is a shame. Oh, this is a shame. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord,